Hello, I'm Mike Badley from Mr. Badley Printed Droids, and today we're going to cover Arduinos. Between myself and Paul Smith, we will have a look at the Arduino family. We'll look at basically installing the Arduino software and how to add libraries. And then what Paul will take us through is perhaps some of the code to have a look a little bit more in depth, particularly about fault finding and getting an understanding of what's actually going on inside those little boxes. But first, let's take a look at the Arduino family. So what is an Arduino? An Arduino is a small microcontroller similar to a PC. The difference I think with Arduinos is that they are designed to be input and output devices. So they're designed to take information from the real world, to do something clever with it, and then to kick it out via LEDs, servos, or motors, etc. And this is what makes them ideal for droids and for our kind of builds, is they're little computers, they're cheap, and you can incorporate them in there to actually physically do something without any additional hardware. The other important thing to mention Arduinos is that they are open source, which means that the hardware and the software is shared with everybody. So there's lots of manufacturers that do different peripherals and different bits of software that you can load up on the Arduino. They also come as a family, so there's the Uno, the Mega, the Nano, the Mini. These are all different versions, but effectively they're the same microcontroller, the same language that it speaks. The only difference is the number of pins and perhaps how uh, fast or how powerful the, the actual processor is. But really, when you look at the Arduino family, it gives you lots and lots of options. And it's not just Arduino that make these. There's a number of different people that manufacture that ma manufacture the Arduino. Uh, devices and so you can choose ones that have got built-in Bluetooth, built-in Wi-Fi, there's lots of different options. We have a quick look at the basic architecture of them. You've got a USB port, that's very important. You plug it into your laptop and you can program it. When you do that it'll also take power from your laptop so you can very easily get up to start to play with these devices. Then you've got a separate power supply and power input, so you can power these through a number of different voltages, but typically they will use five volts, but you can run it off a nine volt battery as it's got a little voltage regulator in there. But the most of the space on the board is taken up to the pins, so the inputs and the outputs, and there's all different types, and we'll maybe cover these a little bit more in, as we go forward, but effectively that's where all of the magic happens. And then finally in the centre you've got the microcontroller. But well, that's enough of the hardware. Let's now have a look at how you start to use these from a software perspective. Okay, so let's have a look at the software. It's very boring installing the software. I'm not going to waste any time because we've only got about 20 minutes. But effectively, if you search for Arduino IDE, that's the environment. And what you can do is do a normal wizard that installs the software you can uh, install the arduino environment use the current version and effectively that's what you then need to program these magical little devices once you've installed those what you'll get is you'll get something that kind of looks like this you start the software up and this is your opening gambit i guess for the environment now arduinos run as with what's called sketches and you don't need anything other than the arduino and to install the software to get started with sketches the first sketch that everybody tends to use is a sketch called blink one of the really useful things within the arduino environment if you click file and examples you can actually select a number of different examples really starting from the very basics and again we'll use blink to show what that is now, I won't get step through this by uh, line by line, but there's some comments at the top which tell you what this sketch is. And then what we very quickly move into is the actual code. The code on the Arduino is made up of three sections. There's a, um, a global section, which is all of this bit before we've got this couple of little void commands. And the way the Arduino works is the global applies to everything, and then there's a couple of little uh, sections. There's a second section called Setup, and a third section called Loop. And when it runs, as with any program, it will run the global settings that may apply to everything on the Arduino. The Setup is what it will run once when it first fires up, but then the main code is running through a loop. What this particular sketch does with Blink is it turns an LED on and off every second. So you can load this sketch up, you can connect your Arduino up with a USB cable, 
Um, and then what you can do is through the tools, you can check that you've got the right board selected. You can select the right port if it's connected. Um, and then it's literally a matter of sketch and upload. And then what you've done is you took your first steps in programming an Arduino. Very, very, very simple. What I'm going to cover now is Arduino libraries. What are libraries? Libraries extend the functionality of what you've got in the IDE um, environment. And what typically they're used for is very similar to drivers in PCs. There are little bits of software that you can pull into the Arduino to allow us to extend the functionality to have an easier interface with devices. What we'll do is we'll take a look at a library for a DF Player Mini, which is a small um, device used for playing sound effects. And we'll have a look at how we actually install that library. Okay, so let's take a look at libraries. Where do you get libraries from? Well, you can search libraries on Google. So I'm just going to search for DF Mini Player Arduino Library. Um, click on the link and it will take you into what's typically a uh, GitHub file. Now within there you'll have lots of things that look all very complicated. What I'm going to do here is just click on here which says download um, and I can choose to download that as zip. A lot of the standard um, DF Mini libraries will download as a zip file. So now you can see that's DF Mini MP3 master zip which we go back into the environment we click on sketch include libraries and we can just add it straight from that zip file there we look at our pc and our downloads and what you'll see is we will see where we've downloaded that df mini master sorry df mp3 player master click on open and what it says at the bottom there is library is now added to your libraries check include library menu so if I go into my sketch, include library, and I scroll down here, you will see we've now got the DF Mini MP3 by Mac who has appeared. If I click on that, it will actually add that library, library to the code. So it will be the first part of actually um, installing that within our code. So when we uh, upload it to our Arduino, it will be there. However, that's not very helpful. The other thing, again, if we look back to our examples like we did in the Blink one, if we scroll down to the bottom, what we'll see is the DF Player Mini MP3, which actually gives us some examples. So I just want to look at the basic Play MP3. And what it actually does then is it will download, it will give you an example of how that particular library is used in real code. So you can even just upload that onto an Arduino, connect your DF player up, and you'll be able to get sound play. So all libraries will come as zip files, just to recap. To add a zip file within the library, we go into Sketch, Include Library. And if it's not in the list, we add the zip file. And we actually browse to where you've downloaded that zip file. And you select that from that zip file, click Open, and it will load. If it's already there, you can see we've got an error that shows that it's already existed. If it's not already there, it will say that it's been added. Once it's been added, click on File and Examples. And what you'll see there is some examples where we can see what code would look like to, say, play random um, for this particular device. And as you start to load more libraries in that fashion and you start to get more examples, you become more familiar with how these things actually function and work. So what we covered there very briefly in 10 minutes is an introduction to the Arduino family, installing the software, installing the libraries, and then starting to delve into the code. The one thing I haven't really covered in detail is how you load sketches onto the hardware but that's quite simple you connect your device up via a usb connector um, you click on tools you select the board that you've connected you select the port which will appear there once you've plugged it in and then literally you click sketch and upload and then you've actually uploaded the sketch now they are i would say the common um, elements that people struggle with but what i'm going to do now is hand over to paul 
who will take us through a little bit more detail in the code. You can see a bit more of the practicalities of how you can use the code to diagnose and to, uh, to fix problems. Welcome to this session. I'm going to have a quick run through on debugging Arduino sketches without the use of test equipment or additional hardware. Um, anybody who's written any code for an Arduino or other embedded device knows how hard it can be to get access to data or signals within the design. Um, and there are some simple tricks available that allow us to, to do some of these things um, without any additional expense. So I've created a very simple sketch. Um, we use a one of the analog inputs connected to a joystick and we're going to output the data as if we're writing to a servo. So this is something we might actually want to do in one of our robotic devices. So we have some initial setup where we define the inputs and the outputs and the main loop is here. So we're going to read the value from the AD, ADC from the analog to digital converter, that's this XPOS uh, value here, read the analog value that's on the A1 input and we expect a value in the range 0 to 1023 and with a joystick it's got a, a sprung center so we expect the value default value to be 500. What we're going to do is we're going to check if the joystick's been moved up or down above or below a, a threshold value on this XPOS value then we're going to alter the servo position and um, either increment or decrement the, the angle position in degrees and send it out to the servo. So the servo library converts the degrees to the, the physical signal that, that's required. And we're going to do that every 100 milliseconds, so every tenth of a second we're going to go around this loop, check these values and change them if we need to. Um, so I have this running and I've been able to hook it up to an oscilloscope. Here you can see the yellow line is the analog input and I've centered it around the zero so we'll see that go up or down. And what we want to look at is the change in this width here. So this, this is the pulse that goes to a servo that tells it what angle it needs to register itself at. So move the value up, uh, down, yep, that seems to be doing the right thing. There's a minimum pulse width, hold it up, there's the maximum pulse width. And of course when it's centered, there's no, it's got to go above or below the threshold before we make a change. So that's why when it's centered, it doesn't, um, it doesn't move again. Okay. So it works, but does it work correctly? So we have these threshold values here we're looking for. We don't want the servo position to go below zero. We want it to have a maximum value of 180. Um, so this is, this is really the problem with debugging Arduino sketches or any other embedded controller is the logic here can get quite complicated can also be embedded in, in other functions and we, we just want to see what's happening making sure it make sure it's doing the right thing so the way to do that is through the serial print command so when we connect the Arduino to our USB port we, we have access to the serial port through the Arduino bootloader and this is the reference page for serial print you can see that it's, we provide a, a value in, as we, that we pass to the function and it's able to convert it reasonably easily into something that is human readable, which is exactly what we want. You can change the format by giving it a second argument. Um, but in, ba in its basic form, we want to output some text with some value so that it's readable and we can um, we can see what's happening. So back to the sketch. 
and hey presto here's a bit of magic code so we're going to output our text exposition backslash t means put a tab space in make some nice um, make it readable readable output the value for exposition exposition is the value that we read from the joystick a uh, bit more space with our tab and then we're going to say this is our servo position which we've calculated and we do that once through the loop so we're going to get quite a lot of output so we launch that through tools through the serial monitor and just drag that over and you can see there we are the it's quite nicely our exposition default value is centers around the 500 value quite nicely and the servo position is fixed at 19. so if we operate the joystick remember we've got to go above the threshold before we see the change so 700 there we go back to zero back to the center position sorry and the value is not changing make it go the other direction let's make sure it limits out at zero and it does back the other way we need to make sure it limits out at 180 and it does there we go so quite happy that that's doing what we expect it to now an Arduino, the Arduino software also has another feature with the plotter which allows us to view variables on a graph so what this is doing any data that you send down the serial port it looks at it and it's able to work out what are what are values um, what are simply text text so x position you can see is text and somewhere in here I can't quite see the colors it looks like green is our x position which makes sense as around 500 servo uh, whatever that color is the purple one servo so this is the value on the servo so again when we move the joystick we should see these values change which gives us should give us a nice visual representation there we go operate the joystick and so another way of viewing the let's see if we can it doesn't seem to want to rescale so not perfect but definitely a way of viewing if you've got values that are changing um, in your loop then certainly this is another way of viewing them to help you with your debugging so there we go some a simple means of testing your Arduino sketches there are a couple of gotchas so every time you launch the serial monitor it does a reset of the Arduino so you can see here it started I just relaunched it and it started back with the values of 500 for the exposition and 90 for the servo so if you need to have something running and it's going to start the serial port halfway through then that can be a problem um, it might you should there's normally there's, there are workarounds but just something to be aware of um, and the other thing that you just might need to do is consider the delay remember we're, we're going around the loop you might have to add some logic around your serial printing so that you you get everything that you need but in general this this really this doesn't need any extra hardware which makes it very convenient um, and simple to use okay thanks for listening cheers thank you paul so what we've covered off today is a whistle stop tour of arduinos we've had a look at the family of hardware we've looked at how you install the environment we've looked at installing libraries and then Paul has done probably the best bit which is starting to delve in how we do things like serial plotters and serial monitors so we can understand what's going on with these devices 
If you want to learn more, I suggest having a look on the internet, YouTube, there's loads of stuff. And Paul and myself will help out if you want to pop any questions across. However, we won't be able to solve and do all the programming for you. The whole point of these uh, little sessions is really to get people's appetite whetted so that they can go off and start to learn how to do. If you master the Arduino, what it does mean is you can add all elements of animation, controls and exciting lights and sound to your droids. So it's well worth the time and the investment. Hopefully that was useful as a starting point, but there's a lot more to learn. Let's get out there and, and, and explore the magic world of Arduinos. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul, for that session. And uh, hopefully it was useful. If you've got any questions, pop them across. And take care and no doubt speak to you all soon.